Wisconsin I is at the Republican State Convention in Milwaukee. We're with 5th District Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner, first elected in 1978. Congressman, thanks for taking time. Happy to be here. Thanks, Steve. Um, as the one who wrote the Patriot Act, we haven't had a chance to talk about what you learned about NSA in the last year as a result of the Snowden disclosures. The most surprising thing to you, Congressman? The most surprising thing to me was that the NSA was doing bulk collections, not only of phone records, uh, but also of texts, uh, emails, maybe even Facebook uh, uh, entries. And that was never anticipated in the Patriot Act, and had that been what the NSA had in mind, the Patriot Act never would have passed. What was anticipated in the Patriot Act is that the NSA would go to the FISA court, which operates in secret, uh, because they had spotted a foreigner uh, who was affiliated with a recognized terrorist organization and in finding out who that person was calling and uh, who those contacts were in touch with. So it was very limited and very targeted. Uh, and instead, without any oversight, uh, the NSA went and got the FISA court to say that uh, they could grab everything because something in there might be relevant. And that's outrageous, and we've got to stop that. Sounds to me like you just described an NSA that is almost a rogue agency, Congressman. Did the NSA break the law? <clears throat> well, the court said that it didn't break the law <clears throat> because the NSA persuaded the FISA court uh, to uh, interpret the word relevant is that they could grab everything because something relevant might be in there. Uh, this is more a failure of oversight by all three branches of government uh, rather than breaking the law. The executive branch uh, submitted the petitions to do what the NSA did. Uh, the FISA court ended up approving it, uh, and the intelligence committees that were supposed to put the brakes on the NSA ended up stepping on the gas. And that's where we're at where we are now. How do you feel about what Snowden leaked? Um, do you consider him a traitor? But the body of knowledge that you and others in Congress now have about the NSA, what's the balance there, sir? Well, he's neither a traitor nor a hero. I think he's a criminal. Uh, he did violate the Espionage Act in putting on the public record uh, classified information, and he also violated the terms of his contract. Uh, that gets to another issue, uh, and that is, is how he was able to get a higher classification than my chief of staff, who has written the legislation uh, to put the brakes on the NSA. So Mr. Snowden had access to more classified information than my chief of staff was allowed to have. It was interesting. Um, we were, the NSA was eavesdropping on the cell phone of the uh, Chancellor of Germany. Um, but the other argument is that governments do this all the time. Do all governments do this all the time, sir? Well, uh, I think a lot of governments do that. Uh, I think we should not have been uh, eavesdropping on uh, Chancellor Merkel's cell phone. Uh, she has proven herself to be a steadfast friend of the United States and has probably been one of the most pro-American chancellors of Germany since the Second World War. Uh, there are chiefs of state that I think we should be eavesdropping on. Uh, I would make the suggestion that the president of Iran is somebody that we ought to be eavesdropping on. Do you think we are? Uh, I, I don't know, and if I did know, I couldn't say. I understand. Well, where does it stand now? Uh, you're, you're writing a bill to provide some oversight over the NSA. Does that bill say no longer bulk collection? Could you give us an update, please? Uh, Senator Leahy and I introduced last October a bipartisan and bicameral bill that does a number of things. One is, is it stops the bulk collection of the NSA, period. And that's not just over phone records, but uh, also uh, over uh, text, email, Facebook posts, and things like that. And goes back to what we thought the Patriot Act originally did, and that is getting the records of people who were first foreigners, and secondly, uh, were affiliated with a recognized uh, terrorist organization. 
The second thing is, is that it opens up the FISA court, uh, not for uh, uh, orders targeting specific individuals, uh, but when they change a policy, such as this reinterpretation of what the word relevant means. And the third thing is that it prevents the NSA if we close the door on the legal precedent that they are using, wrongly in my opinion, uh, to do bulk collections from doing bulk collections with other types of disclosure uh, process that the federal government and law enforcement and intelligence have. Well, President Obama issued an executive order or work to cut back on some of the um, excesses of the NSA. Uh, you don't seem to be satisfied with that and, 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 and a new bill changing the statutes yeah. is necessary? I Yes, the executive order is not good enough, and we do need uh, to stop this by legislation. And uh, if there was just an executive order, uh, once the storm blows over on what the NSA has done, then the executive order could either be revoked or modified by whomever is in office as president at the time. So we do need to have legislation. Now, as I said, Senator Leahy and I introduced our bill last October. It's mm -hmm. called the USA Freedom Act. And I think that uh, the time is coming soon uh, where the White House and the leadership of both parties in both houses, whom Leahy and I are fighting, are going to have to do something so that there are not amendments that are hung on either uh, a Defense Reauthorization Act or an Intelligence Reauthorization Act. So I think the stars are coming into the proper alignment uh, where uh, people who don't think that uh, curtailing the NSA is really a very good idea are going to have to do something and I think that when there's a vote in the House and a vote in the Senate, uh, the Leahy Sensenbrenner plan will prevail. And the people who are against us are of course the President of the United States, uh, Speaker Boehner, uh, Majority Leader Cantor, Minority Leader Pelosi. Majority Leader Reid in the Senate, uh, Minority Leader uh, uh, Mitch McConnell in the Senate. They're, so, so basically, they're all against you. They're all against me. But I think that uh, the rank and file membership of both the House and the Senate realize that something's going to have to be done. And if we end up winning this, and I, you know, uh, this is going to give me a lot of satisfaction because it's basically uh, showing that uh, 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 people who are outraged, both in Congress and out uh, can be able to climb the mountain and win an election. So you you feel confident you you can get your bill passed this this year, sir? I hope so. And the reason uh, there is an urgency is the legal uh, basis for which the bulk collection uh, is sanctioned, which is what we call Section 215 of the Patriot Act. That expires automatically as of June 1st of next year. Uh, so. Uh, the leadership in the White House cannot uh, stall this out uh, because they end up with nothing uh, as of June 1st. Now I do think that a properly limited and oversight business records collection is essential uh, basically to find out what people whom we think are plotting to blow us up are doing. Uh, and without a revision of Section 215, we wouldn't be able to do that. And this all goes to the bigger issue of balancing national security on one side with respect for privacy and civil rights on the other side. I've always believed that we can do both. And what has happened is the pendulum has swung so far on the national security side that people's privacy and civil rights uh, are being trampled on, and the time has come to put a stop to that. Just fun one final question on this issue, Congressman. If your bill doesn't pass, should Americans do anything differently in how they email and call and Facebook and all that? Uh, if your bill doesn't pass, do we still have well, a, rogue agent, a rogue agency out there in the NSA? Well, without the oversight that's necessary by the White House, by the FISA court, and by the intelligence committees of the Congress, we will have a rogue agency. 
Uh, and that's why uh, I've always said that it, the problem is not the fact that we need access to this type of information targeted at guys we figure are bad guys and gals rather than everybody. Uh, and uh, that's what we need to do to secure our national security. Uh, so oversight is key, even with the change in the law that Senator Leahy and I have proposed, and which I think now has got a better than even chance of passing and landing on the president's desk. Uh, new subject. If um, Are you optimistic that your party is going to gain control of the Senate in November, sir? Well, uh, the Obama administration is crashing and burning, and it's not just uh, uh, the public's opposition to seeing that Obamacare means you can't keep your doctor and you can't keep your plan, and it's going to cost more, and the deductibles are huge. But uh, we see failures uh, practically right and left, and uh, more and more people are concerned about the failures in foreign policy. Usually that's off the radar screen, but uh, look, Secretary Kerry's uh, attempt to uh, uh, get peace in the Middle East, uh, that's blowing up. Uh, the president had numerous movable red lines in Syria. The red line has disappeared and now we're caught in the worst of all worlds where we have uh, the Assad government, and Assad is a thug, uh, on one side and we've got a rebel group that is increasingly infiltrated by Al-Qaeda on the other side and then you look at what's happened in the Ukraine where uh, Putin has taken over the Crimea uh, without a shot being fired and now there's all kinds of problems not only in the eastern Ukraine but uh, just recently it spread to Odessa which is in the southern Ukraine. Uh, 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 Mr. Putin is without really any uh, effective response by the West being able to uh, restore the former Soviet Union bit by bit to uh, its former borders and Putin has been very public in saying that. Will, will the sanctions announced by the president and our allies do you have any hope that that'll have any real effect? <laughs> They're jokes, you know, uh, saying that a couple of buddies around Putin uh, can't get visas to the United States and uh, uh, can't get bank accounts, I don't think that's going to hurt them one bit. I don't think they want to come here and I'll bet you they don't have any bank accounts here either. So. Um, is it uh, the criticism of your party's leaders in Washington is that you haven't coalesced about any op, any uh, all alternative to the Affordable Care Act? Is that is that a fair criticism, sir? No, it's not a fair criticism. We had a package of alternatives, the the ACA, also known as Obamacare, uh, where Pelosi gave us 30 minutes to debate it in uh, 2009, right before. Uh, the vote on passage. So what did the news media concentrate on? The House passed Obamacare. It didn't say what the Republican alternative is, and the Republican alternative is no government takeover of health care, uh, helping uh, poor people get health care through vouchers and tax credits and uh, changing antitrust laws, uh, uh, lowering the uh, uh, premiums by uh, having regional and nationwide uh, pools. Uh, I think all of us are in favor of uh, uh, getting rid of pre-existing uh, condition exclusions. We thought we did that uh, almost 20 years ago in the kennedy Casabaum Act and never worked out that way. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that uh, this was sold as a way to get insurance for the uninsured. And I think that most of the people who are uninsured uh, before the passage of Obamacare are still uninsured. And in that respect, it is a failure. Then when the president says eight million people have enrolled, whatever that term means, who are those people? It's not the people who had been without insurance, sir? I think very few of them had been without insurance. Uh, uh, I'm enrolled in Obamacare because that's what the law says. I had insurance with my family before that. Uh, you see a lot of people who are on Medicaid programs in the various states 
transfer from Medicaid to Obamacare, so they had one type of government insurance and they're shifting to another type of government insurance, and there have been no real figures on who had insurance before and had it replaced with Obamacare. Uh, the other thing where we're having a real problem getting information on is how many people have been billed for their premiums. I've been billed for my premium. I have a much bigger deduction from my paycheck uh, after going on Obamacare than before, as of all my colleagues and most of the, the staff of the Congress. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, statistics that have come up that people who have signed up for Obamacare have never been billed for their premium. Well, uh, I do want to respect your time, so just a couple other subjects quickly. The Senate passed a bill on I immigration reform. Mm -hmm. um, that's not acceptable to you as a leader on that issue in the House, sir? Uh, no, it's not. And Speaker Boehner has said it's dead on arrival. I don't even think the Senate has messaged the bill uh, to us because there are changes in the tax law and the Constitution is pretty clear saying that all measures relating to taxes have to originate in the House. And last I saw, uh, Mr. Reed had not messaged the bill to the House because it would be killed as a violation of the Constitution there. You know, we do need to have immigration reform. I think we ought to do it one step at a time and make sure that the border is secured and employers who break the law by hiring illegal immigrants, and sometimes lots of them, uh, end up having the book thrown at them because uh, that's the way to turn off the magnet that brings illegal immigrants into the United States. And no matter what we do uh, on this subject, if we don't turn off that magnet through not going after employers who break the law, then what was told to President Carter and Congress by a Blue Ribbon Commission headed by Father Hesburgh of Notre Dame, who is a self-admitted political liberal, uh, saying if we give any type of amnesty or legalization, uh, it only encourages more illegal immigration into the United States. Now that was over 30 years ago when we only had somewhere around 3 million illegal immigrants. Uh, Congress passed a bill in 86 giving amnesty. President Reagan signed it. We now have somewhere between 11 and 20 million illegal immigrants. And while I admire Ronald Reagan a lot, Lot, he was wrong and Father Hesburgh was right uh, when he said that an amnesty would encourage more illegal immigration. Okay, just two more questions yeah. quickly. Um, with the economic recovery, the deficit, deficits are, deficit estimates are coming down. Is anybody in Washington no longer focused on the looming bankruptcy for Social Security and Meta, me, well, Medicare anymore? Well, Paul Ryan is, and the Ryan budget slowed down the growth rate of Social Security and Medicare, and we can prevent both of these uh, programs from going bankrupt uh, simply by slowing down the growth rate and doing it without uh, hurting people who are either retired or over 55 and uh, about ready to retire. Uh, you know, somehow talking about uh, reforming the so-called entitlement programs is something that nice people don't talk about uh, in mixed company. Uh, what I'm saying is that if they aren't reformed, uh, then uh, these programs aren't going to be worth very much to people who have paid in uh, all their lives because uh, uh, their uh, Social Security has to go on a pay-as-you-go basis. The trustees have said very bluntly that there will be an automatic 27% cut somewhere around 2033. Now, you know, I'll be uh, 90 years old at the time and probably won't be around and uh, uh, I'd be able to afford it because Cheryl and I have put money away for our retirement, but there will be an awful lot of people in 2033 who are a lot less than 90 who are going to say, oh, gee whiz, you know, I was planning on no cut and there's an automatic cut and if Congress does nothing. And that means to stop the automatic cut uh, uh, 29 years from now, 19 years from now, Congress is going to have to do something. Doing nothing means that people are going to get hurt, and they're going to get hurt much worse uh, than if we do something. Then my final question, you mentioned Paul Ryan. Does Wisconsin have 
two serious presidential candidates for 2016, Congressman, and how do you see that? Are they vying together? How do you see that play out, Well, sir? we do have two serious presidential candidates. Both of them are very good friends of mine, and I have mentored both of them and talked to both Congressman Ryan and the governor all the time. What I've told them is they're going to have to work this out themselves because if both of them run, both of them are going to lose. Uh, 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 having somebody from Wisconsin be a candidate for president is going to be very difficult. And we never have had a major party candidate for president. And I discount the La Follette's in uh, 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 1924 because that was more of a protest uh, uh, than, than anything else. But that being said, uh, 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 we are really blessed that we not only have two viable candidates for the Republican nomination, uh, we have a very successful Republican national chairman, Reince Priebus from Kenosha, uh, who has turned the Republican National Committee around, you know, and it shows that little states can develop some pretty good talent and, uh, 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 you know, while we're shining in the sun, uh, we have to order our priorities. Well, since he was the vice presidential nominee, should Paul Ryan be the first one to decide? Uh, again, they're going to have to decide <laughs> Very for, good. Them, for themselves. And uh, uh, I think the heavy hand of the, the, you know, the dean of the Wisconsin congressional delegation will be counterproductive. <laughs> Uh, now, you know, I, I may have to, you know, put them in a room and lock them in there and then I will keep the key in my pocket. It's kind of like the way the Cardinals elect the Pope, <laughs> the Pope. where they, until they reach a, a decision, they, they kept on being locked in. It may come to that. I would hope not. Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner, thank you so much for sitting down Steve, with, yeah. with, with Wisconsin. I have a good convention, sir. Yes, thank you, Steve. Thank you.